Can you mix concrete or mortar with a kitchen mixer? This is definitely not recommended. I mean, it looks like the right thing. And I mean, in theory, it could be for the smallest of jobs, but only for some sort of pancake-like mortar and only a cup or two at most. And to that extent, it's still not going to work. It's probably going to break the, the kitchen mixer because it's not designed for a, a high torque application as needed for mixing concrete or mortar. <laughs> when you have the product right for the job for mixing concrete or mortar, it's a much more heavy duty drill and it would operate at 500, 600 RPM and it would have a massive amount of torque. And it's important because if you don't have that, what you end up doing is you'll end up burning out the tool. A kitchen mixer like this would have very low torque at low operational speed. You would have to turn it into the higher speeds in order for it to have some power, but that would be aerating your mix too greatly and also probably making a huge mess because it'd be throwing it around. It, all in all, it, other than in appearance looking like the right thing, this is just a total miss for what you should use for mixing concrete or mortar. For the most part, for any kind of small or medium batch applications, a two inch margin trowel in a small bucket is really all you need, but I'll give you an important tip that's gonna make your life a lot easier. You might be thinking, every time that I've mixed concrete or mortar, it's a, you know, a lot of work, and it can be, but here's what you can do to make it as easy as possible. You add the dry component and the wet component, your water and your concrete mix, your mortar mix. Add it together such that it's very soupy, very wet still, and it just sloshes around in the bucket more or less. Pretty easy to mix together, wouldn't you say? Well then just add a little bit more of the dry component and slosh it around, and a little bit more of the dry component again and slosh it around. It's starting to thicken up at this point, and you balance upwards by adding dry component into an overly wet mix when you're mixing manually. That allows you to use the minimum amount of physical effort, get the job done as quickly as possible. I mean, you can't be blowing out your shoulders and arms all day long mixing buckets like that, but if you're using a small application where you only need a small amount of concrete or mortar, you should be doing it by hand, not with a kitchen mixer. If you're going to need to batch these over and over again such that you're ruining your muscles, you probably should be using a larger tool for the job. A heavy duty drill like you see here usually comes complete with handholds that would allow you to have a substantially better hold on the drill because you're going to need so because of the amount of torque that these kinds of drills can produce. If you were to bind the concrete mix and you weren't hanging on, well, it's going to start spinning. And that's why you usually have an optional second handle here on a, a drill designed for these applications. But more importantly, it spins very slowly. The low RPM operation is very important because it's safer that way. And it also mixes a better concrete product that doesn't over aerate and doesn't make a mess throwing concrete and mortar all over the place. Something like this would be suitable for up to five gallon bucket batches of concrete or mortar. A kitchen mixer might look like the right thing if you're talking about small batch mortar or concrete, but it's really just not. You want to buy a corded drill that operates at low RPM that is purpose built for mixing applications. A dedicated mixing drill might represent a large investment in your ability to mix concrete or mortar at home, but it is the right move to make. You're going to be burning out appliances or cordless drills in pursuit when really the right tool for the job is just something else. I hope you found this information helpful.